So we're here at the Los Angeles College of Music in Pasadena, California with Jerry Watts. Welcome, Jerry. Um, it's been a while since we've talked to you last. Mm -hmm. I think 10, 12 years, 12 years. Right. Um, how is your posi position at the base department chair at the Los Angeles College of Music going? Uh, it's going uh, really well. We've been building a, a pretty great program for a while, so I have a pretty amazing staff of base teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also a, an amazing master class roster, so we're bringing in people from the outside, and and uh, we get really a, a, a just a, a, a broad overview of the different kinds of bass playing, different kind of concepts, different ways of thinking about it. And I think it's a really it's a really unique and very cool uh, thing for the students here. Um, we we talked a little bit before um, about uh, different schools and stuff. What do you think makes the um the Los Angeles College of Music a little bit different from some of the other schools that are out there now? Well, it's really awesome, for one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, well, probably one of the best things about it, I think, is just that it's a smaller place. It's, it's pretty uh, intimate, so we have very small class sizes. And so that just affords the student access to the teachers. They get a lot of extra attention, a lot of extra focus. Anytime we do have a master class, you know, they have, they're able to have contact with the people that come in. And really a lot of times they'll follow, the students will follow up, maybe have a private lesson or, or uh, you know, go and see a show the guy is playing or, or, or what have you. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, you know, we're, we're in Los Angeles, but actually in the city of Pasadena. So it's a little, just a little bit outside of the, the madness of downtown and Hollywood. And I think that's... I think it's probably a better environment, overall study environment, you know, it's less, less things pulling on you and a little bit more chill, a little, little safer, which I, I think is a, 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 a plus. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys offer four-year degrees here, or can somebody just go and take a one class, or can, do they have to do the whole program? Uh, well, uh, the, the two main programs that we offer, there's an AA degree, which is a year and a half, uh, six quarters of just intensive music war, music classes only. And then they are they also offer, offer a bachelor's in music as well, which has just launched uh, last year. Um, so it's, it's, it's brand new, actually. Uh, so you, you'll have a, you could have a four-year degree if you choose. So there, there, there are those two primary uh, programs. Uh, you know, they, they do have some weekend, um, uh, you know, kind of weekend intensives that, that outside people can take. and. Um, once a year, right before summer begins, uh, on our break, they have a like a summer music camp, and that people could you know attend that for a week of intensive and that's study. That's held here. At the that's year. held here. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. Great. So uh, over the years, um, you being a performing musician yourself, uh, the music industry has had some major changes mm -hmm. with, yeah. the, with the internet <laughs> and uh, recording, obviously Pro Tools and playing the tracks on stage. Um, have you seen a shift in the students and their interest in music and how they approach the instrument? Well, I, yeah, absolutely, and sure, certainly we've lived through a phenomenal uh, paradigm shift in, in the whole music business and, 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 and also in what people are interested in. So um, one, of the, one of the things that happens is that people have come in and they've seen, uh, they have a lot of exposure to things on YouTube, so they've kind of... Um, I heard someone say they, they learn by eye, mm, yeah. <laughs> basically. And so that, that's quite a change from the way that you and I learned yeah. uh, music, which was by ear. And, uh, and so, you know, so there's, uh, that, that changes things. It changes the way they think about uh, the instrument and uh, the purpose and the function of the instrument. So we, we kind of have two camps, and we have people that are interested in kind of traditional or regular uh, bass playing, and then there's there's been a, just an explosion of um, soloistic kinds of playing, an explosion of new techniques and new forms of expression on the bass. So we have people that are really interested in those things. So what uh, my idea is to kind of bridge that gap and uh, and to kind of embrace both things. So the both things are going on. Right. Right. Yeah. You've done a lot of recording projects in your career. Um, what advice would you give to you know players looking to break into that side of the music business, um, as opposed to like you know playing live? Uh, how do you get into that recording thing? Yeah, that's uh, well, that's uh, that's always that's the million dollar question yeah. first of all, and uh, it's changed remarkably. So people do the you know the recording business as a business has shifted, as everyone knows. 
So to hold up an old model of what it is or how to do it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, these days, um, people have to be, you know, technologically literate. They have to be able to record themselves in a whatever, whatever yeah. <laughs> program you're using, you know, uh, in, in whatever their, you know, the DAW of their, their choice. But, um, you know, and be conversant with how to you know, send files and all, and all those sorts of things. As far as getting called for that, you know, it, it's, it's requiring a deeper, deeper level of understanding about um, engineering, how to be an engineer, what, um, what made those sounds of the past. A lot of times people are reaching back to the past, vintage sounds, and what were the elements in the recording process that, that um, uh, allowed them to arrive at those kinds of sounds. Is that something right. you guys touch on during like your curriculum? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So we have, uh, for example, there's a great bass player, Mark Brown, who teaches uh, studio bass here, and so Excellent. those kinds of things are are addressed. Um, although it's uh, it's endless, <laughs> but we want people to be certainly musically literate in all the traditional ways you would think of. So in terms of harmony and theory and air training and piano playing and of course, uh, le literate in all the uh, standard things you, about, about bass playing, stylistic uh, awareness and kind of competency and, and, you know, things about reading and of course everyone, uh, not everyone, but people are, you know, real interested in jazz and improvisation. Mm -hmm. So they've got to have a knowledge of that. But in addition to that, this technological component is just, it's I think today a given. And that's what's different too from, from recording in the past where, you know, it's more on you to, right. pro to, to provide all those different elements. It used to be you just showed up and somebody would be an engineer and a producer, now you have to be Yeah, it was, I did, we didn't know how good we had it. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things that, um, that I've noticed is uh, that a lot of touring acts, um, or, or a lot of acts rather, are touring a lot more uh, because they have to. Um, have you experienced a shift um, in more live gigs and less recording sessions because more um, established artists are touring more uh, due to current trends? They're not selling as many records, so right. they're putting more emphasis on touring constantly. Have you noticed that yourself in your professional experience? Sure. Well, I, I'm, I'm seeing it all around me. Uh, uh, one of the things that's different uh, is that the, you know, I mean, well, there are a lot of things that are different, but the, you know, certainly the pay structure has changed a lot. So there's opportunity for people to go out, but for young players, like the, the, what they're being offered as, uh, for, as a weekly salary is, is uh, sometimes like a, <laughs> appallingly low, yeah. right? Um, but, but that said, certainly with the demise of the record business and the old model of record companies and so on and so forth, people are going out and touring more. And um, yeah, there, there's a huge change. Uh, one of the things we do here, one of the things I started here was a, uh, a synth bass class. That's taught by uh, John Herrera, who's a gra long, long ago graduated from here, an incredible bass player and synth player, but also one of the editors uh, of Bass Player Magazine. And so he's been teaching a synth bass class because honestly, that's real common. Any 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 pop gig like that, you might you might be playing bass, but you'll also be asked to yeah. deliver something uh, on a synth. So, um, so you know, that's one of the things I'm doing to yeah. help. So you guys kind of keep up with the current trends and whatnot. And yeah, yeah. So it's kind of the in a way to, a way to think about it is it's kind of the practical side of it, right? You know, or right. the you know the kind of working uh, even journeyman uh, idea versus the kind of artistic. I'm going to go and. Do uh, solo bass records or right. um, r write music for a requiem for a willow tree or something. I don't yes. know. <laughs> um, and finally, tell us what's been going on with you. Is, do you have any current projects that you're you know, currently doing? Or sure. I, well, I'm continu I continue to record. So I record, uh, you know, your tracks at home for people. I still go to the house and, and do sessions. Uh, it's up and but that's up and down compared with with what it what it used to be. Certainly. Um, and then I've been, the whole time I've been in Los Angeles, uh, I've been just involved in as many different kind of creative projects as I can. I enjoy uh, different kinds of music and different, you know, interfacing with different folks. I'm a real big, I was real big in world music and, and so forth. And, and for the past 10 years, I've really, um, you know, I've just been involved with some really remarkable uh, kind of improv improvisation based Projects, not not necessarily uh, you know straight ahead jazz, mm -hmm. in, in, um, 
but uh, things that are really challenging. So I work with John Diversa and his big band and his small band, a uh, whole variety of other folks. Uh, there's a new project I'm involved with with Daniel Rosenboom, who's got a, his own record label here, and really, uh, really forward, forward thinking and really, really challenging. And so for me, I've kind of moved into playing with the younger generation of guys around town and uh, it's it's different and and really wonderful there's a by the way a great scene now in downtown la uh where there's a lot more um places to play improvised music and people right. are just kind of more open it's 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 a cool it's a very cool change that's right. happened here in town Excellent. yeah and uh if people want to find out more you have a website i'm assuming oh, i do jerrywatts.com or you can find me on facebook twitter uh instagram etc etc periscope Periscope. All right. yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks, yeah. Jerry. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. All right. All right.